Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our worship celebration here at First Presbyterian Church of Freeport. We extend a special welcome to you today because it is Pentecost. May the Holy Spirit descend upon you, descend upon us also with a rush of fire as it did with the apostles on that holy day. At this time, let me also remind you to prepare your elements and have them ready for communion. Let us worship God. Hello, my church family. Can you please join me in the prayer of the day? Today I pray for those whose health is compromised by the coronavirus or any other health issues, for those who are suffering from the economic impact of the virus, for their healthcare workers and other first responders that are putting their lives at risk every day, for our leaders in the world and locally who are trying to get us through this time. God, it can be overwhelming, but can you, you tell us over and over again not to be afraid? Show me how to trust in you. As I examine my heart, help me turn away from my concern with myself and turn my heart and hands in prayer towards the concerns of others. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. That's why we go into the call to worship. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the, same. the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by the one and same spirit who allots to each individual just as the spirit chooses. 
For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Let us worship God. Please join us in the opening hymn. Every time I feel the spirit can be found. See page five for music and lyrics.
friends, let us bow our heads and our hearts in a time of prayer. God of flame and fire, you have poured out your spirit upon us and all creation, and we beg you, heal and renew the face of this earth. Send forth your spirit to empower and to unite us for service for the sake of your people. God of wonder, continually pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and especially those who hold power or authority in the world, that they may see visions, and they may dream dreams of unity and justice and peace. We pray for righteousness, peace, and justice to take control in Minnesota and across our country in the wake of the, the killing of George Floyd. We pray for protests to remain nonviolent for agitators to, to be removed and for looting and fires and all the additional harm that has been caused to stop. We pray for, uh, for India and Bangladesh who are in the path of a super cyclone. And we pray again for our country and our state as the coronavirus still remains a threat. And we pray for an end to this pandemic and for all who are on the front lines battling disease, this disease, especially the doctors and nurses and other first responders. We pray for those hospitalized who cannot have visitors, or nursing homes who can't have visitors because of the lockdown. And we pray for the 38 million people who are unemployed, and those who are unemployed, and those who must choose between paying their rent and paying for on the table for their children, and we pray for those businesses that are struggling to survive in this pandemic. And again, Lord, we pray for those elected officials as they combat this pandemic, and we pray for the safety of our astronauts. And we pray with Brian and Carol for Linda Siegman on the death last week of her husband, Steve, who was a family friend. And we pray with Barbara Rivera that her daughter-in-law Carrie's last month of pregnancy will go smoothly and safely. And for her son Ed, who is a policeman, for all police, for all protesters, that they may be safe and hear each other. Oh God of all peoples, unite us that we may be one body, one spirit, and we can transcend all divisions through Jesus Christ our Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Acts. We will be reading chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Listen to the word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at that, this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not these who were speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. Now, my friends, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We live in a time of sharp divisions. People seem to be on edge. People seem to be even at each other's throats. There are those who want to wear a mask versus those who refuse to wear a mask. There are clerks and guards who have been attacked by people who don't mask. And there have been name calling from both sides of the issue. There are armed protests clamoring for states to open up against those who support stay-at-home orders. And there are deepening divides along political and economic lines. And there are deep-rooted ethnic and racial tensions highlighted this past week by the killing of an African-American man, George Floyd, by the police of Minnesota. A tragedy that has sparked protests and looting and fires and additional injury to protesters. A lot of this fueled by outside agitators. And then closer to home, we saw this past week that confrontation between a, a Caucasian woman and an African American man right here in cent the Central Park Ramble. And that went viral. It reminds me of a story. I was walking across a bridge one day and I saw a man standing on the edge, about to jump off. So I ran over and said, stop, don't do it. Well, why shouldn't I, he said. Well, there's so much to live for. And he said, like what? And I said, well, are you religious or atheist? And he said, religious. And I said, me too. Are you Christian or Jewish or Buddhist? And he said, Christian. I said, me too. Are you Episcopalian or Baptist? And he said, I'm Baptist. And I said, wow, me too. Are you a Baptist Church of God or Baptist Church of the Lord? And he said, Baptist Church of God. And I said, me too. Are you original Baptist Church of God or are you reformed Baptist Church of God? And he said, reformed Baptist Church of God. And I said, me too. Are you Reformed Baptist Church of God, Reformation of 1879, or Reformed 
Reformed Baptist Church of God Reformation of 1915. And he said, Reformation Baptist Church of God Reformation of 1915. So I said, you heretic. And I walked away from him. This is a reminder that for all we have in common, we can't help it seem but the focus on the differences. And it has its roots in the fallen nature of humankind. From that sin of Adam and Eve in, the, in paradise and the fighting between Cain and Abel, the brutality of human beings that led up to Noah and the flood, the fighting that it just continued with between brothers Esau and Jacob and Joseph and his siblings. The Bible is a record, a human record of the sad tale of broken families and broken societies and broken nations, unable to get along with each other unless the grace of God intervenes. Pentecost, this gift of the Holy Spirit poured out on God's people, is the antidote to these conflicts we find ourselves struggling with. Pentecost calls us to live out boldly the faith that in is embodied in what Paul teaches us when he says a variety of gifts and we have a variety of services and a variety of activities but one spirit. The base, basic experience of Pentecost is that through the power of the Holy Spirit all peoples are meant to be healed and called forth in unity in within our diversity held together in perfect harmony by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The hallmark of Pentecost is the coming together of the human community through the connection of the Spirit. The death and resurrection of Jesus, his ascension into heaven, and then this outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost speaks to the reforging of a covenant people as one. Grace is given to people from many different languages and lands so that they can hear each other and understand each other. Grace is given to ordinary people like us to speak out an extraordinary message to, to strangers even about the love of God poured out in our hearts in Christ. So this outpouring of the Holy Spirit is consistent with the very life that Jesus modeled for us. A life of loving sacrifice meant for the healing and the building up of the whole, meant for the forgiveness of sinners, meant for the lifting up of the outcasts, and meant for the reclaiming of that which is marginalized so that all is restored to loving connection. How we need the Holy Spirit to make us all. The Holy Spirit, the very life of God, the very essence of Jesus poured out in our hearts. Our advocate, our comforter, our great disturber of our spiritual complacency. It is what keeps us alive and keeps us renewing and keeps us involved in the world and with each other. The Holy Spirit breaks through our own self-imposed constraints, our worn-out ideas and ways of working that no longer, of relating that no longer work. We need Pentecost in order to heal our world, to heal our communities, and to be a new people in Christ's name. And Pentecost is about that everyone, young and old, men and women, no matter what economic, social, political, racial, ethnic, or religious status, or sexual orientation, everyone, everyone has a dream. Everyone is given a vision, and everyone has a prophetic word, and everyone has a gift that is important for the good of all. Our challenge is to stop limiting the power of the Holy Spirit. If 
our church is to survive, the message of Pentecost must be proclaimed and reclaimed. You know, we live in, in a world that has seen unprecedented change in these last 150 years. 90% of what has been created has been created in these past 150 years. And never has the world held so many people and so many cultures. Never before has the communication been so immediate and comprehensive. Think of it, if a little virus like COVID-19 can affect the world the way it has, think about what the outpouring of the Holy Spirit through our hearts outward to the world can do. We are called to release the power of the Holy Spirit so that through us, we can realize Paul's declaration to the Galatians that there is neither Jew or Gentile, neither slave or free, neither there is male or female, for we are one in Christ Jesus. So, here is my Pentecost dream, that your voice and my voice will be such a channel of the Holy Spirit that people with no faith persuasion, people raised in, a, in the church and have left the church, will all say, hey, I hear you. You are speaking my language. You are speaking to my spiritual hunger. Here is my Pentecost dream, that you and I can hear that voice of Jesus and our hearts will burn with the fire of the Spirit and the barriers that separate us will tumble down. And here is my Pentecost dream that people of different racial and ethnic differences, people of all nationalities that speak Russian, Indonesian, Japanese, Arabic, Hausa, Zulu, Yoruba, or any of the 6,912 known languages in the world can say, we feel heard by you. Here is my Pentecost dream that people of varying economic and political views can see all that binds us together rather than what tears us apart. This is my Pentecost dream. You see that two people meeting on a bridge, whatever religious background can meet and embrace, that two people meeting on a bridge, rich or poor, young or old, gay or straight, of different economic or national backgrounds, can embrace each other, knowing that neither has to be rejected, neither has to walk away because of Pentecost, and because there is so much to live for. We are one spirit, one body, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, please let us affirm our faith. We believe in a loving God who is life's breath for all of Earth's creatures, who is the ground in which our lives flourish, who is the mystery toward which we are drawn. We believe in the risen Christ, whose life is the way we see God made real whose death bears witness to the power of God, whose presence nourishes our spirits each day. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who flows as the refreshing spring of life, who comes as divine fire to energize the faithful, who creates communities of joy and justice.
James Watkins. Spirit of truth, breathe life into us and move us to good places. Help us to see the ways in which we have the power and the resources to change the world and urge us to use what we have for the good of all. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring us together in love. Bind broken hearts with your consolation. Bind broken families with your solace. Bind all violence with peace. And bind us individuals into harmony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, I invite you to please turn to pages 6 and 7 in your bulletin. We have quite a few announcements in there, but I would also invite you to go through it in its entirety, because it's, it's quite a bit we have, and um, I will just be highlighting some of the events. And I ask that please remember that for the time being, every, every service is being recorded and then uploaded and posted to YouTube. You may watch the service at any time after it is uploaded. As we seek to maintain our vibrant ministries, even in the face of these imposing times, we would like to remind you that even as we do the service, notice that there's not a time for offering where we pass the offering plates around. But we do this by you contributing and continuing to send your pledges and tithes and donations to the church. And there are listed ways in which you can do this. Uh, we ask that you send your tithe or your donations to First Presbyterian Church of Freeport. And uh, you can do this through U United States Postal Service or through PayPal. Please let us know if you ha are having any trouble opening any of the links or documents that are being sent to you this week. We also would like to let you know that the pantry supplies continue to be low, but we continue to do what we can by way of your contribution. And we would like to let you know that uh, on Fridays from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and on Sundays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, you can drop off your contributions by the back door of the church. We will also receive checks at this time. If you need to send it into the church, please make it out to First Presbyterian Church of Freeport. And in the memo column, you can put what it's for. The items that are most needed are listed in the bulletin. We have a new item here, um, whereby if you call 516-227-8900, which is the Nassau County Department for Senior Citizens, you can receive five washable cloth reusable mats which will be sent to you free of charge. You may find that you may need to call more than once. It's a little difficult to get through, but keep trying, and they will get it to you. We also would like to let you know that if there's anyone in need of food, we have three, area, three places in which you can go to in order to receive food. It's also listed in your bulletin. Freeport Emergency Food Pantry at 230 Hans Avenue in Freeport, the Perfecting Faith Church, 311 North Main Street, Freeport, and the Bible Street Presbyterian Church at 130 South Central Avenue. Let me also remind you that today, which is Pentecost, there is a special Pentecost offering. Please see the Pentecost activities on page 7 and 10. I would also, also like to 
say to you that uh, the church has been discussing opening, reopening of the church, which is something that will be done very slowly, and I would want to guess that it will be done in phases. But the time projected is June the 14th, that you will receive uh, correspondence letting you know where things are positioned. Like I said, it's being heavily discussed. It has um, just about been decided that that's the time chosen to open up the church back. I would also like to thank um, Keith Boss, Julius Nicoletti, and Pam Simmons for this very nice decorating that they have provided. Even though you're home, we tried our best here to bring Pentecost to you the way you know it. Thank you, Keith. Please pass on my thanks to Julius and I will get back. Thank you also. This is just about all the announcements I have at this time. So we will have our closing hymn, number 408. There is a sweet, sweet spirit. The music can be found on pages 8 and 10. Thank you.